All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a comment here from Pelion J Pa, seven zero eight six. Um, I don't know if I want to read this whole comment here. Man, it's a lot. It's a lot on the table there, but let me just uh, start at the top here. And he quotes Second Peter one verse twenty. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Now, immediately, what stands out to me is that that is not what Second Peter one verse twenty says. All right, so we'll go here. Oh, goodness sakes! What I do? Oh, wrong chapter. All right, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now this right here ought to tell you that the Bible is not from man. <laughs> it's incredible that you would quote this verse from a, a obviously corrupt Bible <clears throat> excuse me and uh, you know uh, yeah it's incredible it really is verse 21 for prophecy never had its origin in the human will but prophets through human spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit Now he says, you need the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible correctly. Please ask him and delete this teaching of yours. Alright, so, and th this is interesting because um, the, the Holy Spirit is great, but without faith, it's useless for you. Okay, so, the faith is the key to understanding. Now the Holy Spirit will help you to understand, but without faith it's useless. And you cannot have faith in the Word of God if you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. And this is very obvious to me that when you uh, quote from a corrupt Bible translation, you don't believe in any Bible at all. You don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands. You don't, you know, you're going to say, well, you got to go back to the originals. Yet there is no originals. And we read in the Bible that Moses smashed the originals. There are no originals. And um, the Word of God is a spirit and it is life. Okay, so um, that's really key. If you don't understand that, man, forget about the rest really that I mean, that's really got to be your starting point um, uh, and it, it all starts with faith you gotta have faith in God without faith in God there is no understanding and uh, the Holy Spirit can't help you if you don't have faith alright so if I could skim the rest of this here um, <laughs> Your problem is you don't believe the Bible that stated there are two covenant, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. It started in Jeremiah 31, 31. The Jews are the chosen nation based on descendants of Abraham. All right, so I'm going to tell you the problem with that. All right. So, <laughs> I mean, this is, it's as if this person has no understanding of the Bible at all and has never read the New Testament so I could spend all day breaking this down so let's let's uh, just start with this one thing here the Jew, the Jews are the chosen nation based on descendants of Abraham alright so first of all it's important to understand this. 
Okay. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So just because somebody is born with dark hair and a big nose, that doesn't mean they're saved. All right? Just because you got dark hair, big nose, and a lot of money, that ain't that ain't meaning you're going to heaven. All right. But this is what these guys imply, and it, to me, it just seems like uh, you're not a Christian; you're a Jew. All right. You're you practice Judaism. And you believe that uh, people with dark hair, big noses, and a lot of money are God's people. Even though they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of God do you worship that will save people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ? Alright. What kind of God do you worship that looks at people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ as his people <laughs> it's obvious to me that you worship a God that they call Satan or the devil and even Jesus talks to them in John chapter 8 when he's having a discussion with the Jews. He says, I know you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do which ye have seen with your father. And he's not talking about Abraham. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. So that, I mean, there's a conversation right there. That should be easy to understand regarding the Old Testament uh, Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not Abraham's children. And flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. In fact, man, there's a lot we can go over. And this is not just... A one, a one time deal. I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. Alright, so let's go here. Uh, James chapter 2. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. So if you say, well, these guys are God's people, just because they were born, you know, with the, with the dark hair and the big nose and a lot of money. If you have respect of persons, you commit sin. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Oh, this guy was born with dark hair and a big nose. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, being saved. Flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. And you go to John chapter 3. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. Right. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And uh, we can go to Matthew, uh, here, let me find it here. Let me find a verse here, Matthew 21, verse 43. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, this is Jesus taking the kingdom of God away from the Jews and giving it to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, anybody can be saved anybody can be born of God the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you are not one of his now we can go uh, try to make this simple to understand here in Exodus 19 verse 6 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel are the holy nation. All right, and then let's reverse these numbers here if we could. In 1 Peter chapter 2, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. We are the children of Israel. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are... The holy nation, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We are the royal priesthood of God. We are kings and priests unto God and His Father. We are the holy nation of God. We are the children of Israel. All right. I mean, that's the Bible is crystal clear on that. There shouldn't be any dispute about that whatsoever, unless, of course, you don't believe the Bible. You're lacking faith. If you lack faith, you're going to lack understanding, and this is quite evident of that right here. All right, and they are bound by the old covenant. All right, so anybody that is under the law is cursed oh where's this verse at uh, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them all right Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So the law is there to be our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The law could never save anybody. Okay. The law can never save anybody. And it's always been about faith. That's never changed. Okay. In Hebrews 11, it should be pretty obvious. All the way back to Abel and Cain, and Enoch, and Adam, and Noah, and Abraham, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. It's incredible how important faith is. And let's go to a uh, second, oh, hold on a second, what is that? Second Corinthians 3 verse 15 but even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart why is the veil upon their heart because they don't have faith 
But when they do have faith, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So you've got to have faith. Without faith, you will not be able to see. Without faith, you will not be able to understand. So you want to talk about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is great, and the Holy Spirit will guide us to all truth, but without faith, it's useless. you got to have faith. But the key to understanding the Bible is faith. It's always been about faith, man. The key to salvation is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's always been about faith. You know, without faith, you know, forget about it. And this, you know, you can apply this to a lot of things in life, and it's been evidenced all throughout your life, the, the importance of faith. Okay, we Christians are the chosen generation, or a chosen nation, based on faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are under the new covenant, sealed by the blood of Jesus. God didn't promise land for us, but the new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven in the new heaven and earth Christians have no land to defend the Jews have no the Jews they don't have anything okay so uh, that apparently yeah, sometimes I wonder about this because in 1948 the United Nations granted land to the religion of Judaism and people interpreted that as a fulfilling of Bible scripture where um, Jesus or you know God will gather together his elect it will bring the people of Israel back together and they misinterpret that as uh, being fulfilled in 1948 when all these every single time that the Bible talks about bringing back the the people of Israel the gathering together of the elect all those mentions in the Old Testament are going to happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there is no other gathering all right, when God is going to pull them out of every nation around the world and bring them into one place that one place is New Jerusalem which is above. All right, it's not over there in the Middle East. Not a single time. Oops. Uh oh, am I misspelling that? Jerusalem. Uh oh. Maybe I need to go this way. Gosh. Uh, there we go. Uh, Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all and now when Jerusalem the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven this is after our enemy is destroyed at our feet forever okay uh, I've been I've been uh, going over this almost every single day to make it very simple that at the end of the world we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15. And I, when the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, this is again, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Alright, again, a fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. In uh, Revelation 3, let's... Let's take a look at that. Well, I guess first of all, let's go to Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works, and thy tribulation, and thy poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Alright, the blasphemy is the rejection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And again in Revelation 3 verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet 
and to know that I have loved thee. Remember Psalm 110, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And again in Genesis 3 verse 15, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Alright, so this is a fulfillment that's going to happen at the end of the world. Alright, there's no escaping it. And there's no way for these guys to be saved if they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not possible. And it's very hateful, extremely evil, wicked, and cruel to teach anybody that they can be saved even though they don't believe in Jesus. Alright? You are, clearly are of the devil. And you're getting all your thoughts and imaginations from Satan. There's no question about it. Um, Romans 11, should I go over that? I wasn't going to go over everything, but I guess maybe I will. I don't know. Let's just go to Romans 11. I don't know why um, people quote these goofy Bible versions and in a way it's interesting but and then uh, the, the, prob the problem I have with these bad these uh, corrupt Bible perversions is that I used to read them and they would screw me up and I would be like well I thought this and I thought that and then I'd go look and it's like no I was wrong I'm wrong what's wrong you know what's going on well once you I mean to me it's obvious it's because I wasn't having faith in what I was reading and that's why there was so much confusion when I tried to remember what the Bible is saying and I would it's not that I couldn't remember it's it was that I was remembering incorrectly I remembered wrong and that's because the Bible verses in the corrupt Bible perversions are wrong themselves and so everything is going to get cleared up once you start to have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands and it's obvious it's the King James Bible it is the pure Word of God in the English language it's from God and um, you know without faith forget about it right so Romans 11 verse 25 for I would not brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there should there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Now, let's see, how many verses do you quote here? Because I want to be fair. Go to 27. That's what I quoted. Alright, so that's good enough. Now, this is pretty simple here. Uh, the incorrect way to look at this is to imagine this here is 1948 Israel. Uh, you got to understand this as the Old Testament Israel before Jesus came along and um, and uh, think of it as the um, the Jews alright and now the Gentiles have come in this is a, the same thing when Jesus says the, na the kingdom of God should be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof now Jesus has made the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him now that blindness has happened to them that do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's very clear by reading here and re reading the whole Bible that the Jews can still be saved today. All right, but only by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That God has not blocked them from being saved, but they are blinded because they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's that's the same for everybody and I just showed a verse a little while ago about how even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord 
the veil shall be taken away. Okay, so there's blindness. When you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even they, even these uh, so-called Jews, if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil is upon their heart, even unto this day. Now, look, they, they still have a chance to be saved, but you're lying to them when you say they are saved, even though they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's cruel, that's evil, wicked, that's hateful. There's only one way to be saved, and that's by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way. It's only by the blood of Jesus that our sins can be taken away. It's only by what Jesus has done for us that we might be saved. It's only by Jesus. There is no other way. Period. And it's just ignorant, stupid, and it's a lie. You're flat out lying when you imply or suggest that Jews that reject Jesus Christ are God's people. That's not true at all. Uh, we are true followers of Jesus Christ. The, I'm sorry, we the true followers followers uh, followers of Jesus Christ will be raptured to meet Jesus Christ in the air then Israel will be saved all right so we are Israel all right this is you quoted first Thessalonians 4 and there's no mention at all of two different groups of people being saved first the Christians and then the Jews that's not what it says at all it's very clear those that are dead well, let's, okay, so let's imagine right now Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven first those that are dead will rise up those that are dead but those who will live right those who are dead in Christ those who will be resurrected all right, so let's say this is the last day. First, the dead in Christ shall rise first. All right, and, okay, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but that, that's very simple. First, the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. All right, so that means those of us right now, like, let's say in 10 seconds, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and it's the end of the world. All right, so first the dead in Christ will rise up. Now we'll see them rising up, and we're going to rise up with them. Okay? It's that simple. All right. We'll, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Those people today that say, oh, they're Jews, and they, you know, I don't know what they do to that wall over there in Jerusalem, that doesn't mean nothing. Alright? Just because they got the dark hair, the goofy outfit, and the big nose, and a lot of money, that doesn't mean they're going to be caught up together with us. At all. That's not what this is saying at all. It's just absolutely deranged. To even suggest that you don't need the Lord Jesus Christ I mean you might as well just come out and say Jesus Christ is worthless what he did is vain don't even believe in him just believe in the big nose dark haired rich fellas I mean that no I really really mean that and um, it's you know, quite quite incredible in my opinion how we are warned of these people this is not just uh, you know a slight misunderstanding these guys are liars and the people that support them if you will I mean it really is there any difference if you support them you're one of them but the people that support them it's the same thing in Philippians 3 verse 2 beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of the concision 
That's you know what that's talking about? It's talking about Jews. Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. I already showed you John chapter eight. Alright, so let's go to another one. Let's go to oh I can't think of what verse exactly that is. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 alright and we just for clarification here this is talking about the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men these guys, they're not saved. They wholly, wholly reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not saved. The veil is upon their heart. They don't have any understanding whatsoever. None. They, they, you know, they can claim to be experts and, you know, they can claim to be scholars and all that good stuff, but they don't have understanding because they don't have faith. Alright, so I'm probably going on too long here. Um, let's see. Here, just... I think that's good enough, isn't it? I mean, for crying out loud, it's pretty obvious. Um... You know that uh, the, there's only one way to be saved, right? We go to Matthew chapter seven. Right. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few be there, I'm sorry, and few be there, and few there be that find it, excuse me. Alright, so the gate is narrow the gate that leads to everlasting life it's narrow it's not broad there's only one way to be saved and that's through Jesus Christ now let's see if I can find a verse So what verse am I looking for here? Uh, I'm not sure what verse I'm looking for. Uh, uh, well, I guess we could go here. You know, there's a lot here that we could go to. But this one might actually be the one I'm thinking of. I don't know. Alright, so who's a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Alright, no man knows the Father but by the Son and no man... Okay, I feel like I'm getting long-winded right now. But who is... Who are these Jews? Over in 1948 created Israel. They are people that reject Jesus. They deny Jesus. They do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ at all. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. So these guys that you're claiming to be saved just because they were born with dark hair and a big nose, these people are Antichrist because they deny that Jesus is the Christ. There's so many uh, Bible scriptures that go over this. 
it's incredible and so you have to ha almost it seems like you almost have a have to have a willful misunderstanding to be this far off All right, and then <laughs> you come on and you comment on my channel and you say delete my teaching all right and of course in this video here I try to make it as simple as possible it's so obvious here to me if you go to John chapter 2 and you know the question of a third temple which comes from Daniel chapter 9 the idea all right which they is what you know what they're getting it from and even Jesus says to who Who's he talking to? The Jews. He's talking to the Jews. And they don't understand. Jesus says unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. It's, we're seeing it happening right in front of our eyes. Time and time again. Day after day. These people have no understanding because they don't have any faith. And so, also, when these people talk about a third temple being built in Jerusalem, it's because they're lacking faith in the Bible that they hold in their hands I mean you cannot read this and say oh I mean you, essentially you're saying oh, Jesus has lied he lied here you just have to be honest about it you have to say Jesus lied here and that to, to hell with what he did All right, he's they're gonna build a third temple in Jerusalem all right, just forget about what Jesus says here. Jesus is ignorant, and what these other men say, you know, the Jews, they know what's going on. Jesus, he just stupid, stupid, ignorant, and uh, you just gotta ignore what he said. Don't, don't listen. Don't even listen to him. Don't even listen to him. Uh, really, I mean, just be honest. That's what you're saying when you say that they're going to build a third temple and it's somehow related to Bible prophecy when clearly Jesus laid down his life he's the one that destroyed the temple he allowed them to destroy his temple but nevertheless that temple was destroyed and that temple is the temple that we're in right now this temple that we're in it's been destroyed and it's been rebuilt the prophecies regarding the rebuilding of the temple are all about what Jesus has done he raised it up in three days he rebuilt the temple he has done it all And the and this is not just one verse, man. Yeah, I mean, we could just let's do it this way. Oh, it's actually First Corinthians three as well. Let me try it this way. Let's go this way, because I want you to see a couple of these verses here. No. Oh, what's the words that I want to use? Um, Maybe this is the help here, I don't know. There it is. Alright. Okay, so I just want to point out those two verses right here. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? And Jesus is speaking of the temple of his body. Jesus understood it. He gets it. 
And so this temple, this body of ours, is the temple. This body that we're in right now is the temple of God. And Jesus has entered into our temple. And he has destroyed it. And he has rebuilt it back up in three days. Alright, so when he returns in the clouds of heaven, we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of, of an eye, we will be transformed into our glorified bodies. This is when we will enter the new temple. And we will be lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. Alright? This is when that happens. This is when we exit this temple and we enter the new temple that waits for us. Jesus Christ has done it all. So he has entered our temple and he has uh, rebuilt the temple and ascended to heaven and promised to gather us together when he returns. All right, he has led the way for us. Jesus has died and resurrected and ascended to heaven. We that are his will follow the path that he has taken. See, he leads the way for us out of this wicked world and into an uh, everlasting world where there is no suffering, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, and no more death. All those things are going to be done away with. Jesus has led the way. He has done it all. And all we do is follow him. All right, because we're going to die we're going to be lifted back up. We're going to ascend to heaven and meet the Lord in the air. All right. Meanwhile, when that happens, our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed, done away with forever. All right. So when all this happens, when we have been transformed into our glorified bodies, when this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Alright, so look, let's take comfort in that fact. And, you know, all this confusion, I don't understand nothing. Delete my channel, delete my teaching. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm telling you. You gotta have faith. Yeah, you really, you got no business talking to anybody about the Bible if you're lacking faith nothing more important than faith and for crying out loud don't teach Jews don't teach anybody that they can be saved without believing in the Lord Jesus Christ that's as wicked as it comes it really is I mean if you really cared about those people you wouldn't teach them that they can be saved even though they don't believe in Jesus. It's wicked. It's cruel. It's hateful. You don't care for those guys at all. And you don't have any understanding whatsoever. Alright, so that's it. You know, I just want to hopefully somebody out there will learn something from today's lesson. Really. It's an interesting topic, but. At the end of the day, our only hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you want understanding, it has to start with faith. It's always been about faith. 